Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. <coughs> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ. Christ. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Remaining, standing a moment longer, let us pray. Merciful God, who didst send thy messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. After the fall of both the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel, God promises to return his people from their exile in Babylon. A reading from the 40th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah, beginning at the first verse. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her time and that her penalty is paid. That she has received from the Lord's hand double for all all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert highways for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for their mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flow of flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, and when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up to your high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voices with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rule for him, and his reward is with him, and his response is before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead them to mother sheep. The word of the Lord. We'll read together the portion of Psalm 85 appointed to be read on this second Sunday of Advent. We'll read by the alternate half verse, breaking at the asterisk. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Truly, 
His salvation is very near to those who fear him. Mercy and truth have met together. Truth shall spring up from the earth. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. Righteousness shall go before him. In his second letter to the early church, St. Peter explains why the second coming has been delayed. A reading from the third chapter of St. Peter's second letter, beginning at the 8th verse. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit might guide us to the truth that we each need to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like us to uh, use our imaginations somewhat and take ourselves back to the year 70 A.D. In Jerusalem, things were not going well. The city of Jerusalem was under siege by the power of Rome because in 66 A.D., a zealot, a group of the Jewish uh, community that felt that overthrowing the Roman Empire was a good plan. It is believed, as a bit of a side note, it is believed that Judas was perhaps also a zealot, and part of his motivation for the betrayal of Jesus was that Jesus didn't go along with the zealot belief in military insurrection. And Judas lost his patience and turned Jesus in to sort of rouse the zealot troops that and that rousing of the troops began to take place in earnest 66 AD in Rome in 69 AD the Emperor Nero the one who fiddled while Rome burned uh, died and four succeeding Caesars were appointed all of whom were assassinated so it was probably not a good job to have at the time to be the Caesar. The fifth Caesar appointed was the General Vespasian, and Vespasian was the leader of the Roman troops laying siege to Jerusalem. So Vespasian was not in a good mood. There was um, widespread hunger, um, sanitation issues, the city under siege, uh, just it was a big mess. Uh, various segments of the Israelite world that were of different ethnicities were at 
each other's throats, families were coming apart, it was just grim. The Jews of the rabbinical nature, of the Sanhedrin nature, of the establishment nature, those folks really wanted to do whatever they could to go back to the Pax Romana, to the peaceful coexistence between the Jews and the Romans, and that was their view, and that view was clearly not the view of the segment of the Jewish community, the Zealots, who had started the trouble and were continuing to um, act and fight, much like guerrilla warfare um, these days, um, not having enough troops to have sort of pitched battles, but would just pick off Roman soldiers here and there, and that didn't go well with the Romans. What also didn't go well with either of those three parties, the rabbis, the, the rabbinical powers that be, the zealots, or the Romans, were the Christians. The Christians, the follower of Jesus, were uh, viewed by the rabbis as her heretics, heretical Jews declaring a, a Messiah to be the Messiah who they did not accept as the Messiah. The zealots didn't like the Christians because they preferred to uh, not fight uh, the Roman powers and wanted to uh, declare the power of Jesus over any power, be it Jewish or uh, Roman, and that would, didn't sit well with them. And the, the Romans didn't like this designation that we see in the uh, Latin translation of the gospel, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. On many Roman coins, the Son of God, the uh, Divi, the divine Philae, uh, the divine son would be written and the Caesar was viewed as a god and a son of God if not fully God so when the Christians claimed Jesus to be the son of God the Romans didn't like that so we have lots of tension lots of turmoil and if you're there in Jerusalem and, and somebody sort of runs up to you with a scroll sort of saying hot off the presses hot off the presses you got to read this and at the beginning of that scroll, whether it's the title of the scroll or just the first line, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And if you had any kind of association with Jesus, you would say, but wasn't that the guy, you know, 40 years ago, so long ago, 40 years ago, that, that was killed? And, and what, what's become of that? That's not much of a leader that uh, getting crucified, you know, sort of end of that for those that did not believe. And then that's conflicted with the good news of Jesus Christ. How is this dead Messiah, dead false Messiah from the rabbi's point of view, dead peaceful Messiah from the zealot's point of view, dead troublemaker from the point of view of the Romans, how is that good news? And I think Mark, as writing the gospel, begins to say, well, we're going to make some connections. We're going to make some analogies between this moment and the moment in Israel's history of the good news declared in Isaiah 40, comfort, of oh, comfort, my people, says the Lord. Those that have been in exile in Babylon are invited back to Jerusalem, that their time of of burden, their time of punishment is over, and they will be restored to Jerusalem. It seems that that is, works to the extent that the present day, i.e. 70 AD, present day folks of Jerusalem would like to hear some good news, would like to hear that some peace that they knew before was being restored, it doesn't look likely to happen, but they're willing to listen. And so that's the angle that Mark is playing, is that you receive the good news of God at the time of the return from exile, receive the good news of God, who is Jesus, in this time of siege. The next layer is a little bit more hidden, and that is that Mark is referring to a prophecy from Malachi about the prophet Elijah. And that's brought home by 
uh, Mark's description of John as one who wore camel's hair and a, a leather uh, belt and uh, ate honey and locusts. That's an Elijah description. So Mark is describing John the Baptist in terms of Elijah, and that's not lost on his audience. So we have the prophecy of Isaiah being brought into the present siege of Jerusalem. We have the Old Testament prophet Elijah being brought into the present day in terms of John. And what is interesting is that that first line, again, the good news of Jesus Christ, the first character introduced in the story is not Jesus, but John. And John has that decided role to prepare the people's ears and hearts and spirits to receive the good news. Because John's angle on the reception of the good news is that we must repent. Now, most folks don't like the first thing out of the preacher's mouth being repent. Uh, not a, a good way to start. Nor do people in the culture, in, in a secular sense, want to be told the Romans are besieging the city, everybody's at each other's throats, there's desperation because of your sin's contribution to that evil time. Nobody wants to be held accountable. Nobody wants to be a part of the problem. They'd much rather receive the solution of God is going to intervene. And God does intervene in history in Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel good news. The good news, the euangelion, the good news of God in Christ is that Jesus has come. And Jesus brings us his peace. And so we can make yet another analogy from 70 AD to our current circumstances, be it COVID, be it, you know, we, they, political discourse or screaming and yelling and everybody having trouble getting along and listening and caring about each other, that Jesus is present here, that his good news is here for us to hear that is not left or right, liberal or conservative, winner or loser or, you know, powerful or, um, you know, downtrodden. This is Jesus' victory over the vicissitudes of life. This is the gospel good news of God in his son Jesus, who comes in the midst of our darkest days of the past several years. We could probably readily admit that. That this is a time of great turmoil. And the solution is not our solution or their solution, the solution is, and God's response is, Jesus. We declare the gospel good news that Jesus has come among us, bringing the peace of God with his uh, reconciling love and healing power. It is Jesus that is the answer to our difficulties. It is Jesus's perspective that he has come for all, for the rabbis, for the zealots, for the Romans, for us, for the right and for the wrong and for the good and for the bad. Jesus has come for all of us that we might be individually responsible for our sins that detract us from the mission, that we are able to be vessels of that peace. So that as we go into the world, we're not looking to, to prove ourselves right or somebody else wrong, but we're bringing the tidings, the good news of God's peace. It is a wonderful opportunity when people are hurting for, hungry for, where can I find some peace? When, where, when will this be over? When will things get back to normal? Those sorts of Concerns are on all of our hearts. And Jesus gives us that now. And we have that message to give to others. That Jesus allows the peace of God to be present in our hearts and overflowing those hearts to other hearts.
Amen. We'll stand and declare our faith in God by saying the words of the Nicene Creed as they are found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess their holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers that they might, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive the holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that in rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with thy substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, and in any other adversary. Please lift up the following in your prayers. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain, the Right Reverend Carlos Lopez Lozano, who is Bishop of the Spanish Reformed Episcopal Church. Those in our parish who are sick or recovering, especially Don and Nancy Dandelson, Pam Haddon, and Pat Aldridge. For our friends, neighbors, and extended family who are ill or have special needs, particularly Sylvia, Carly, Jenny, Justin, Connie, 
Gloria, John, Michelle, Joan, Mike, Robert, Judy, Ann, Ronnie, Keith, Bill, Darlene, George, Bob, Ed, Betty, Jackie, Barbara, Barbara, Linda, Bo, Cheryl, and Chris. And those with special needs, particularly the homeless, the hungry, and all victims of terrorism and their families. For those serving in and supporting the armed forces, especially Caitlin Beal, Robert Rode III, Timothy Roy, Matt Cash, Shane Hubbard, and Nicholas Chatham. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and thy service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Paul and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy holy kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God, all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and with thy spirit. Charles was just reminding, asking me to uh, make the announcement regarding our virtual Advent Lessons and Carol service. It will be broadcast, available thereafter um, at 5 o'clock next Sunday, December 13. Um, as you know, we sort of lost out on our efforts to hold something of a uh, Christmas dinner. Um, so that's on the way of COVID-related tragedies. Uh, but we have a, a 
few more opportunities uh, to make uh, family recordings of greetings from St. Nicholas, and um, they will be supplemented by some uh, assistance from parents. Um, specifically, if you would hide a, a, a small token type gift somewhere in the house, and then Santa, St. Nicholas, could tell the child by name, go look, go look in the basement, call whatever, and it would be just a fun thing to do. So if, you, if you're interested in child, grandchild, neighbor, niece, nephew, whatever it might be, um, just call into the parish office, um, child's name, and, you know, do a little bit like how they're doing, you know, some, some little report that, that be conversation starter for St. Nick. And uh, we will be recording uh, those uh, this week so that families can have them to be shared with their children at whatever time they feel that appropriate. Um, a thought to, to share about Christmas Eve, um, I, and this, this is mixed up with uh, personal family things for me, and so I feel badly about that being the case of, of my sort of situation having a lot to do with scheduling. My daughter, Christian, the older daughter, Christian, is pregnant with our first grandchild, and she said, I want to be especially careful with COVID stuff uh, around the holidays, so she has asked her, Christian has asked her parents, uh, the child's grandparents, to do um, a really clear-cut, firm-type quarantine beginning the 15th of December, which would be a week from Tuesday. Um, that necessitates asking uh, David Tetro to come on the 20th and then try to manage uh, Christmas Eve. We're going to have the family service, a 4.30 sort of informal service, be uh, done virtually. Uh, so it can be used when, whenever you'd like. Uh, but we will have an in-person 10.30 uh, Festal Eucharist on Christmas Eve evening. And Christian's phrase for my behavior during that service was to be in a bubble. I was supposed to come in and out. Don't speak to anybody. Don't touch anybody. Don't let anybody close to you. Just in and out. Go out. You know, out. So we'll see how that works. Um, <laughs> try the best I can. But at this point, because after making this announcement at 8 o'clock, some folks are saying, I don't know, rates of positivity and guidelines and all this could, could even you know, impact that. But we, we're going to plan as if that's not the case and have uh, the 1030 Christmas Eve service like usual. Um, I guess that's what I know for announcements. No, was it? Okay. Linda and Jackie. All right. Are John, are you getting out of Linda's way? Yes. Okay. All right. Good morning. I wanted everybody to hear me, so I came here. I was looking over our wonderful presents that people have pre presented us for our shoebox ministry. This is the, where we give the presents of things that are warm and cuddly, like socks, hats, mittens, or scarves and gloves to our friends who need them. Uh, this year we're going to be giving to 50 people, about 23 men and 22 women. That's a lot more than last year. It's asking you a lot. I still need a number of things to put in these boxes. And I still need some boxes. Um, this is a hard time for everybody. You know, people don't want to get out. But whatever you can do, even if you just give money, we can probably do the shopping. We still need things like socks for both men and women. We need some more hats for men, maybe a few more scarves. And perhaps uh, the shoe boxes themselves, we know that people don't always want to wrap them. So if you want to get a prepared decorative box from Michael's or from some place where they're sold, you can do that and bring them in. We'd like to be able to give 50 boxes to people. 
At this point, I only have about, I might have 20. I haven't asked Kitty about her count, but I might have 20, and I still need 30 boxes. So if you can come up with it, whether you wrap it or bring it, if you can get it to the church or somehow get in touch with Sherry, Stevie, our wonderful administrative assistant, that would be very helpful. Um, thank you so much, and just remember that we're trying to help others do all of this too, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christ loves us in offering and sacrifice to God.
great Thanksgiving follows Eucharistic prayer one, which is found in your bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator of the light and source of life, who has made us in thine image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The people may kneel or stand. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance of blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee, to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. 
And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer found in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope of that everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as hath not prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The love of Christ Jesus ever enfold you, the love of God ever encircle you, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit ever enrich you, now and evermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.